you've done the interviews, you've got the transcripts, you've stared at them for longer than you care to admit. But instead of finding clear, coherent insights, you're just seeing chaos. Every participant has a different story. You're second guessing your interpretations. You feel guilty for leaving anything out. And the whole thing just feels like a big mess. If that sounds familiar, don't panic, okay? You're not doing it wrong. You are just doing qualitative research. And it's meant to feel like this sometimes, it really it is. And actually, this can be a sign that you're doing it right. I am always much more worried about the people doing qualitative analysis who are like, yeah, everything's fine, no problem. I'm like, you are headed for trouble. <laughs> so mess is good, it really is. If we've not met before, hi, I'm Dr. Elizabeth Yardley. And in this video, I'm gonna share with you the four most common blocks that I see PhD students coming up against when they're doing qualitative analysis. They can really knock your confidence. So we're gonna push them out of the way one at a time. Let's get into it. Struggle number one. Your participants' experiences all seem to be completely different. How do you make sense of this? This is the messy mosaic of real life. In qualitative research, you ask a question and instead of getting a few clear answers, you might get a dozen different ones. They all seem completely different, they all seem to contradict one another. And some of them seem similar, but are they really? It's just a big pile of messy laundry. And this is one of the most common freak outs, especially for students who've been used to neat, tidy, quantitative data up till this point. But here's the thing, variation is the data. Mess is normal. Qualitative research isn't about finding one truth, the truth. It's about exploring complexity, nuance and meaning. When people have different experiences, you don't need to flatten those differences. You need to understand the patterns within them. So instead of asking why are all these stories different, try asking this instead. What are the key tensions or contrasts here? Are the categories, identities or contexts that shape these differences? Let's say you're researching experiences of remote learning. Some participants might love the flexibility. Others might feel completely isolated. What do those stories tell you together about the meaning of remote learning? How do they speak to issues of things like identity, access or support? Have you felt this way about your data, like it's all over the place? Tell me in the comments, because your experience might really help somebody else who's stuck too. So get typing. Struggle number two. And this is about the worry, the concern that people have about interpreting things wrong and misrepresenting what it is your participants are really saying. This one comes from a genuine place of care and concern. And I love that. You're trying to do justice to your participants. You're trying to tell their stories with honesty and respect. But here's the thing. Qualitative research is all about interpretation. It's not about getting it right, like there's one correct answer lying there in the data waiting to be found. It's about being thoughtful, reflexive and transparent. So instead of asking, am I interpreting this wrong? Ask this instead. What led me to this interpretation? How does my background, my experience, my identity shape what I see here? Have I explained why I think this matters? Let's say that a participant describes their experience like feeling like a ghost in the classroom. You might relate that to feelings of invisibility, marginalization or disengagement, but your job is to unpack that interpretation and show your workings out. So you might say, this quote suggests the participant felt ignored or excluded. As a former teacher, I was struck by this imagery and explored it further in relation to power and belonging. That's not a guess, that's grounded interpretation. Struggle number three. 
Struggle number three is knowing what to leave out, what to exclude. And that can be really hard because it all feels important, doesn't it? You've spent weeks or months with your participant stories. You know how rich and how moving they all are. And now someone tells you that you can't include all of it. And you're like, why not? But you can't include all of it. You can't because you have a limited word count. You have a limited amount of space in which to talk about your findings. And you've found so much. I know you want to put it all in, but resist the urge to do that. Try thinking about it like this, okay? Leaving out quotes doesn't mean that you're leaving out meaning. Your analysis, your takeaways, they are shaped by all of your data, not just the bits that make it into the final document. And even if a quote doesn't appear in your findings chapter, it doesn't mean it didn't matter, okay? Because it still shaped your thinking. It still helped you on that journey to where you got. It was still part of your process, so it still counts. So if you're feeling guilty about excluding something, about leaving something out, ask yourself this. Did this quote or moment help me see something new? Is that insight reflected in my themes, even if the quote isn't? You don't owe each of your participants an equal word count. You owe them honest, thoughtful engagement with their stories, with their data. And if you've done that, then you haven't let anyone down, okay? PhD students are so worried about letting participants down, about not allowing participants' voices to be heard. But you've got to reframe the way that you're thinking about that because this isn't about showcasing everything. It's about showing your reader how you made sense of everything. Before we get on to the next point, if you want to support the channel and keep these videos coming, you can drop a few pennies in our virtual tip jar by clicking the thanks button below. I massively appreciate every single one of you who does that because it ensures that we can keep putting these videos out there for free, so thank you. Now, let's get into the comments. Which of the struggles that I've mentioned so far has hit home for you the most? Have you found your way through any of them? How did you come out the other side? Are you still battling with one of them? And what advice would you have for other students who are coming across them for the first time? Get in the comments, get chatting about this stuff. Struggle number four is that feeling that your data is a mess, but not only that, you feel like you don't know what you're doing. If you've ever looked at your transcripts, your data and thought, I am lost, I do not know what I'm doing, it doesn't mean you're a bad researcher. It just means you're a qualitative researcher. This stuff is messy because life is messy. And as qualitative researchers, we get right in the weeds of it. One thing you need to remember is that qualitative research doesn't chase objectivity. It values trustworthiness and authenticity. You are the instrument, you are the lens. Your job isn't to remove yourself from the research. It's to reflect on how you are shaping it. That is rigorous in qualitative research. But when we're trained in quantitative environments or when we're surrounded by people who just don't get qualitative research, we can fall back into some of those old habits. And I speak as a social science person who did their PhD in a business school, which I think is for a whole other video. But you might find yourself thinking things like, I need to be more objective. Is my research too biased? Have I got enough interviews? Should I count how many people said this or what proportion of people said this? And all of a sudden, you are trying to turn rich contextualized data into something that will fit in a spreadsheet. So let's flip that. Instead of asking, how do I clean this up? Try asking these things instead. How can I embrace the mess and move through it? And what does this mess actually mean? Create memos, write notes to yourself, start journaling about it. Visualize your codes, talk to another researcher about it. And more importantly, trust that the meaning is in there and trust yourself to find it. Qualitative research is about meaning making, not box ticking. And if it feels tough, if it feels hard, that is not because you're doing it wrong. If anything, that is because you're doing it right. 
it is supposed to feel messy, it's supposed to be hard. And if you're still wrapping your head around qualitative research in general, go and check out the video that's appearing on the screen right now. It breaks down all of the essentials of qualitative research, so go watch it, I'll see you in there.